Jeff and Megan's family, county educators, and students. Thank you for being here for Jeff Shartner's commissioning ceremony. My name is Nancy Dahl, and I'm the principal. Jeff is an ambitious young man who is motivated by the high expectations and goals he sets for himself. He is an amazing educator, husband, and father. I'm sure that he also represents the Army well as a parent with this promotion. On behalf of Brunswick High School, I would like to congratulate Jeff for this major accomplishment. At this time, I would like to invite Major Clancy to the podium to begin the ceremony. Thanks very much, uh, Principal Dahl, uh, distinguished guests, members of our unit, uh, former members of our unit who are here, uh, students, uh, most especially Jeff's family and friends. Uh, thanks everybody for being here today. Uh, this is a really important ceremony uh, in, uh, in one's career, in anyone's career. Uh, it's especially important for Jeff um, because it, typically when someone's commissioned as second lieutenant, they're either coming out of college or officer candidate school and they have probably no affiliation with the Army before that time. Jeff's a little different. Jeff's been in the Army now 12 11. years, and uh, he's, he's got a lot of miles on him, right? <laughs> he's, he's been to Iraq a few times. Uh, he's been around the block. Uh, and throughout it all, uh, he's been a top performer. Uh, he was a top performer uh, when we were in uh, the same unit out of Fort Meade, and he continues to be uh, one of the best soldiers uh, in his present unit. Um, on top of that, throughout, you know, throughout his time in service, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention his family and the support that he's had from them, uh, from his wife Megan, from his two beautiful daughters now, um, and from you know, his whole extended family and his friends. Uh, also, the support that he has uh, from, you know, in his civilian life uh, from uh, you know, the educational community here uh, uh, at the high school. Um, so a special thanks to everybody for that. And a special thanks to everyone for being here on this important, important day. So a little bit about the commissioning ceremony. So it's, it's a time-honored tradition uh, that signifies a new officer joining the profession of arms. And as I said before, Jeff's been a member of the profession of arms for, for some time now. Um, and all that experience that he brings with him uh, to the officer corps uh, is really going really to assist us as he continues to lead soldiers into the future. Uh, so the ceremony is, is really the visible recognition of him transitioning from a non-commissioned officer, a staff sergeant, to, to a commissioned officer as a second lieutenant. As you guys will see in just a little bit here, the pinning of the second lieutenant rank that he wears right here, that's a visible sign of his appointment uh, and of the commitment made by him uh, to the United States Army and, and to, our, to our nation. Um, by becoming a commissioned officer, he's, uh, he's an agent of the executive branch uh, of the government, and he's appointed by the president uh, for his commission. Um, so at this time, uh, Jeff, if you'd come up front, we'll uh, dispense with you over there. Turn towards me. Just raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state your full name. I, Jeff Conrad Charter. Having been appointed. Having been appointed an officer in the U.S. Army, an officer in the U.S. Army, in the grade of second lieutenant, in the grade of second lieutenant, to solemnly swear, to solemnly swear, to support and defend, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, and that I will bear, and I will bear true faith, true faith, and allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same, that I take this. Uh, obligation freely that I take this obligation freely without mental reservation without mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will well and that I will well and faithfully discharge and faithfully discharge the duties upon the office the duties upon the office which I'm about to enter which I am about to enter so help me God so help me God congratulations sir. Now that we've got the tough 
part, and the tough part was for me because I stumbled over some of those words. Now that we've got the tough part out of the way, comes the good part. And we'll ask Megan, his wife, to come on up. Jeff, if you turn towards the audience, please. I'll read the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and professional abilities of Jeff Conrad Schartner. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore promoted in the United States Army to the rank of second lieutenant, effective 20 November 2014, by order of the Secretary of the Army, signed John McHugh. Give him another round of applause. Good job. Good job. Good job. So, as we do with every commissioning ceremony, after the uh, the new officer has been commissioned, he has an opportunity to uh, to take the floor and, and thank all of you all. Thank you all for being here. Um, I know today, especially with the weather as it is, I appreciate people making their uh, way over to the school and putting off their duties today. Um, I know that I'm not the only one waiting for spring. I know it's coming, but not soon enough. Um, but I want to start by saying uh, thank you to God for this wonderful blessing and opportunity. Um, a lot of you here know me well enough to know that I would not be here at all if it wasn't for the amazing grace of God. Um, I also want to thank Nancy Dahl and the administration team for being so supportive throughout this entire process. They never batted an eye at giving me every available resource to make this ceremony a reality today. Um, along those lines, I also want to thank the custodial staff for helping with all the setting up and eventually the taking down of all the things that you see that we needed for setup. Uh, the theater crew for letting us invade their space and time today. And I also want to thank the BHS band and their director, Matt Fowler. Uh, they actually learned the Army song just for today's ceremony. So you'll hear that as we walk out. So I, I appreciate you guys taking on that challenge. Um, and also, thank you to all the fantastic students here at Brunswick High School uh, for being here today who, without them, this ceremony would have been a much more dreary affair. Uh, a lot of people have asked me throughout the planning of this event, why is this army ceremony going to be held at a high school? So I told them there are a few reasons, but primarily it was because of a strong and unanticipated but much appreciated show of support from the awesome students here at the school. Uh, the ceremony was originally supposed to be held at the drill hall of my last unit, the 2nd of the 80th Training Support Battalion out of Owings Mills, Maryland. So these ceremonies are typically are typical for Army Reserve, um, and it's a bare minimum of flair and any additional frivolity. Uh, it's, it's a pretty basic ceremony. So a few students asked if they could attend the ceremony. I assured them that it was going to be boring, and not worth the hour and a half drive from here to there, and it was going to be at 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning. This, however, did not dissuade them. The following day, Allie Wilson, Hoodsy, and Rufty, I'm calling you guys out specifically, they came back to class and they asked me for the address to the drill hall in Owings Mills because they had secured a car and they were definitely coming. So at that point, uh, the conversation was started with uh, Sergeant First Class Patterson, who was my first line leader at the 2nd and 80th, about moving the ceremony from Owings Mills to here. He was all for it, which I kind of didn't expect, but he was. He got on board right away, uh, and Megan and I discussed some of the logistics, and we decided to make the switch. So after roughly two months... We're finally getting to uh, sit down and have the opportunity to share in this moment. Um, now, when I first found out about 
the commission, and I had been approved, this was going back to uh, September, and I knew there was going to be some kind of a ceremony, and I knew I had to take my oath, and I knew I would receive the rank of second lieutenant. I knew I wanted Major Pat Clancy to be part of it. Uh, when I first met Major Clancy, we were actually both transitioning back to the United States from overseas deployments of our own. And he, uh, we were both relatively new members of the 3rd of the 312th Training Support Battalion at Fort Meade, Maryland. Um, we're actually both the same age. Uh, we're both married. We have two young children, and uh, we both have brothers who we love and admire. I love you, brother. <laughs> and we're both constantly juggling the different various aspects of our lives and trying to keep on top of all things. So he's a very busy guy. Um, but one of the first memories I have of Major Clancy is a blur. Uh, literally, he was running and jumping, and he was doing it so fast that he was blurry. I don't know if you remember this now, but I'm going to tell the story anyway. Uh, we were doing some close quarters combat training in an improvised shoot house scenario at a training facility outside of Baltimore, and Major Clancy had been recruited to be one of the scenario-based enemies, otherwise known as the opposing force, or OP4, in Army acronym language. He was the perfect choice for this job. His job was to hide in this dilapidated, run-down, dingy building full of old furniture and random disrepair, and he was supposed to pop out of his hiding places and see if he could catch the teams of good guys walking through the building off guard. So let me make sure that I'm explaining this right. They told us to get into groups of our own choosing. Walk down a hallway on a prescribed route that the op four knew about. They knew where we were gonna be, when we were gonna be there, how many of us there were, and they told us to just kind of pop in out of random rooms uh, with a bare minimum of instruction. So being as this was a training exercise and we, it was specifically designed to correct bad tactics, we were uh, either given two types of simulation weapons, uh, one fired plastic bullets and one fired uh, paintball rounds. So they were designed to kind of teach you not to do the things that got you shot, because it hurt bad. So here he is with his, um, in his op four positions. They had the same weapons, so they considered that to be a fair fight. Uh, but the part of the story they haven't told you is that Major Clancy is an infantry officer. And not only that, he's fresh off deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan with none other than the 82nd Airborne out of Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and the 101st Airborne out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky, which are two of the most well-known and decorated Army divisions in modern combat. So that means that not only is Major Clancy an infantry officer, with all the skills and training that go along with that, but he's also airborne and air assault qualified. Oh, uh, did I mention he's also an Army Ranger? And while I'm at it, I might as well just go ahead and throw in there that whole West Point graduate thing, because that kind of factors in. So, so here we come, the group of Army reservists, bebopping down the hallways, feeling like we're James Bond or Jason Bourne, sneaking up on our next hapless victim. And needless to say, we're a little bit outmatched in this bout. So we're walking down the hallway, and it's pop, pop. Well, where'd that come from? I have no idea. Keep going, keep going. Pop, pop. Where did that come from? I have no idea. Next thing we know, we see this blur of, of tan going between the doors. Well, maybe we should go in there. Well, we walked right into a trap. And he jumps out from behind the couch. And he ducks into a closet. And he's shooting us all the whole time. And he's diving. And it turns out he's got his whole costume on that he's designed to look like some of our, our terrorist agents. So that it's a blur. That's the first time I ever met him. And then I found out later on that he was specifically chosen to be that uh, op four. Um, since then, we developed a, uh, a pretty close friendship, uh, and he's mentored me through this whole process. And um, he, he's one of the main reasons why I went through with it and why I stuck with it. So I really appreciate you being here, sir. Um, I also want to thank the uh, current, past, and future Army comrades who uh, made the drive. Uh, we have some driving from New Jersey, West Virginia, uh, parts of Virginia, 
um, and some from uh, parts of Maryland. Um, and if it wasn't for the kindness, the guidance, the friendship, and the leadership that you showed me throughout our time together in the Army, uh, I would not be here today. Um, I also want to thank, thank the uh, friends and colleagues who were able to uh, take the time out of their busy schedule to come and share in this moment. Um, there have been a lot of moments uh, that we have shared in the past, uh, and it's always good to see those people who have helped shape you personally and professionally, um, and I want to thank you guys so much for being here and, and also sharing in this uh, happy moment. I want to thank my family. Um, there's really no amount of uh, words or uh, thank yous that can encompass the sheer gratitude that I have to express towards my family. Um, instead, uh, I'll simply try to continue to be the best person that I can be, and I'll try to tell you guys that I love you as often as I can. Um, and lastly, I want to thank my wife, Megan. Uh, and the best way that I can do that is through a quick story. <laughs> so, those are pretty familiar words for some of the people in the audience. Uh, there was a G-chat exchange. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, on Google you can chat with each other. And um, Megan and I have been uh, having many, many, many of these sorts of exchanges over the last month. Um, as we've been juggling between uh, moving out and moving in. We just moved this past weekend um, to Gailey Manor. Uh, so, I don't know if you guys remember, but it snowed about eight inches, which made moving a little bit chaotic, to say the least. Um, and so we were trying to make sure that everything was going to line up the right way. Um, and, you know, we were going to make sure that our two daughters, um, Emma and Quinn, students, students thank you, I guess, a little, a little delay, that's okay. Uh, we wanted to make sure that they were happy and cared for and in, in good hands, which they always have been. Thank you again, family. Um, so uh, we've been continually communicating back and forth uh, through all types of mediums, texting and everything else. Um, and I, I wanted to mention to her about this specific event today, and I was trying to brace her for the possibility that she would most likely need to be up on the stage and that she would have some sort of a role to play. And she said, why? Uh, this is your ceremony. And I didn't have to think. Uh, my response was, there is no me without you. Um, there is... The, I didn't pay them to do that. Uh, so for me, there's no success. Uh, I have no success without uh, what you are to me. Uh, you are the calming steady, loving person that balances my world into a reality that makes all things possible. Uh, so thank you for always being there and for always being exactly what I need. So, um, <laughs> so with that being said, um, that concludes the ceremony. Uh, we have some uh, music on the way out, and then we have some refreshments in the uh, lobby area. So that'll be it for today. Thank you again for coming. <laughs>
He is an amazing educator, husband, and father. I'm sure that he also represents the Army well as a parent with this promotion. On behalf of Brunswick High School, I would like to congratulate Jeff for this major accomplishment. At this time, I would like to invite Major Clancy to the podium to begin the ceremony. Thanks very much, uh, Principal Dahl, uh, distinguished guests, members of our unit, uh, former members of our unit who are here, uh, students, uh, most especially Jeff's family and friends. Uh, thanks everybody for being here today. Uh, this is a really important ceremony uh, in, uh, in one's career, in anyone's career. Uh, it's especially important for Jeff um, because it, typically when someone's commissioned as second lieutenant, they're either coming out of college or officer candidate school, and they have probably no affiliation with the Army before that time. Jeff's a little different. Jeff's been in the Army now 12 11. years, and uh, he's, he's got a lot of miles on him, right? <laughs> he's, he's been to Iraq a few times. Uh, he's been around the block. Uh, and throughout it all, uh, he's been a top performer. Uh, he was a top performer uh, when we were in uh, the same unit out of Fort Meade, and he continues to be uh, one of the best soldiers uh, in his present unit. Um, on top of that, throughout, you know, throughout his time in service, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention his family and the support that he's had from them, uh, from his wife Megan, from his two beautiful daughters now, um, and from you know, his whole extended family and his friends. Uh, also, the support that he has uh, from you know, in his civilian life uh, from, uh, you know, the educational community here uh, uh, at the high school. Um, so a special thanks to everybody for that, and a special thanks to everyone for being here on this important, important day. So a little bit about the commissioning ceremony. So it's, it's a time-honored tradition uh, that signifies a new officer joining the profession of arms. And as I said before, Jeff's been a member of the profession of arms for, for some time now. Um, and all that experience that he brings with him uh, to the officer corps uh, is really going really gonna to assist us as he continues to lead soldiers into the future. Uh, so the ceremony is, is really the visible recognition of him transitioning from a non-commissioned officer, a staff sergeant, to, to a commissioned officer as a second lieutenant. As you guys will see in just a little bit here, the pinning of the second lieutenant rank that he wears right here, that's a visible sign of his appointment. Uh, and of the commitment made by him uh, to the United States Army and, and to, our, to our nation. Um, by becoming a, a commissioned officer, he's, uh, he's an agent of the executive branch uh, of the government, and he's appointed by the president uh, for his commission. Um, so at this time, uh, Jeff, if you'd come up front, we'll uh, dispense with you over there. Just raise your right hand. I state your full name. I, Jeff Conrad Chartner. Having been appointed. Having been appointed. An officer in the U.S. Army. An officer in the U.S. Army. In the grade of second lieutenant. In the grade of second lieutenant. To solemnly swear. To solemnly swear. To support and defend. To support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will bear. And I will bear. True faith. True faith and allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I take this uh, obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without mental reservation. Without mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well. And that I will well. And faithfully discharge. And faithfully discharge. The duties upon the office. The duties upon the office. Which I am about to enter. Which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Jeff. So, so now that we've got the tough part, and the tough part was for me because I stumbled over some of those words. Now that we've got the tough part out of the way, comes the good part. And we'll ask Megan, his wife, to come on up. Jeff, if you turn towards the audience, please. I'll read the orders. Attention to orders. 
the President of the United States, States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and professional abilities of Jeff Conrad Shartner. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore promoted in the United States Army to the rank of second lieutenant. Thank you for being here for Jeff Shartner's commissioning.